People showing up here, just a little recap. Uh, we're the Crypto Basic Podcast. My name is Mike. I'm here with Brent. And we like to come here every week. We were invited and we made, you know, this agreement with these guys. Come into this Discord, hang out for an hour, talk about current events, what's going on in the our cryptocurrency Discord or, or the regular uh, Reddit channel. The subreddit. And here we are. So, yep. So we are going to talk about the top stories that we found interesting. I don't think we have any stories about any bananas or bananas but but we do have some some cool stuff so i'm you know we, we want to talk about what the community likes to hear so we're talking about we're going to start out with some eos how's that sound Ugh. i know listen l look i wish we didn't have to talk about eos all the time but remember they raised four billion dollars now just keep that in the back of your mind as we listen to some of this stuff um so <laughs> eos the remember so I, I i forgot about this but remember when they f were doing their ico like about halfway through and you looked on their website all of their branding was decentralized everything that was like their their tagline right and and somebody used the wayback machine to prove that in this particular stories uh in this particular stories comments so i'm going to post a story here story we're talking about we're talking about eos blows its decentralized cover again and reverses stolen funds so <laughs> I, I i like the titles of some of these things sometimes but blowing their like at this point everybody has to kind of understand that they're not decentralized but they don't and that wasn't their original intention like they were originally decentralized everything oh my god we're so decentralized this is going to be amazing uh but it changed so they are not it, they're they're not even on message with that anymore. They're always they always wanted the ability to recover stolen funds as a thing, and it is nice to recover stolen funds. Like the the idea that somebody can screw up, get m money stole from them, and then f have a recourse is nice. Like it's a nice in theory idea, and it is one of the biggest problems with cryptocurrency is that like if you don't protect yourself and you don't do the right things, you can end up losing a lot of money very very quickly. And I see what I see the reason why people might want to give up some of their de all of their decentralization in order to do this. But this is the latest in the string of things that just make, you know, kind of prove that this is what it is. So my favorite comment here is uh, is this guy, uh, K Penny, and they or girl, I guess I don't know who this is, but they hit the nail on the head, bud. Why even bother switching to this reinvented wheel if it's such a poor alternative to the wheel we're already using? And this really encapsulates my thoughts on the process because the we have centralized authorities that have the ability to reverse funds and change things and print money and do whatever they want. Like, we have that already, and it's not – like, this isn't a strictly better option in any way to what we already have as far as I can tell. And why are we why are we interested in using EOS over PayPal or EOS over Bank of America? I don't know, but that is really what it is. So for anybody who's confused about the decentralization, I want to refer to the actual arbitration case they put out like this uh, paper that shows what happened in this particular case of theft. And the right in the beginning, this is actually said. Under the powers afforded to me as the arbitrator under Article 6 of the Rules of Dispute Resolution, I, Ben Gates, rule that the EOS account in dispute should be returned to the claimant with immediate effect and that the freeze over the assets within said accounts is removed. He uses the pronouns I, me, and his name, so any possible pretense of decentralization it has to be gone at this point. Like you are not, it, like at, at, at least Ripple's pretending. The here there there's there's no pretext to this at all anymore. Um, and the end of this result is, or the end result of this is they were able to find evidence that the person who put in this claim owned the Ethereum address that they, uh, I guess they, it looks like they sent the coins to the wrong address. It doesn't even look like it was theft. It like during the. During the coin switchover, it looked like they sent, they got the EOS sent to the wrong place. Now, maybe they got fished, maybe they didn't, I don't know. 
they didn't actually put whether the person got fished or not in there. They just got that the person proved that they owned the Ethereum address that originally started the transaction and that they didn't own the the wallet that the transaction went to. So they moved it from where the funds ended up to where they were supposed to go. Um, the user? I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stop you there for a second because, and, and, and this is something that like I'm going to struggle with a little bit because I agree with everything your intentions are with this is that decentralization decentralization is important and that there are many things that you know make crypto space unique compared to the other options that we have but at the same time like it's easy for a large group of people even within the crypto space to see something like this and think this is a full win for the company and and i don't even blame necessarily eos for believing that this is the best interest of people but the, the fact remains like i think that eos is acting in the best interest of what it believes is for the people but that happens to go against some of the general philosophies as to why myself and brent are in crypto i'm, I'm gonna put words in your mouth just for a second there you're welcome to right right respond no, to right. that but you know I, this is why i keep recently saying I think mass adoption is taking significantly longer than I originally expected because this is like, I don't understand how I'm going to be able to convince people that like a, a centralized power being able to undo something bad is something that shouldn't be allowed. Well, it's tough because it's, it's a long road. You have to go from, okay, they reversed some stolen funds on a transaction. Okay. But now they're also enforcing taxes. Like they see that you have money in your wallet and now they're taking automatic taxes out of it. Or maybe they're making you pay for something else, or maybe they're going forward and they're saying you agreed to. This is an ar argument that was posted in one of the uh, forums, but or one of the comments. I didn't grab it, but maybe you agreed to some licensing agreement that meant that you were going to be paying, you know, to EOS every X amount of days, but you don't remember agreeing to it. Something like that. Like, there's a lot of slippery slope. Everybody, if they were the dictator of their own world, would be doing it the right way. In their mind, like in my mind, yeah, I would. I don't want people to get stolen from. Fuck the people that are stealing the money from them. I want. I, I would love to reverse that and be a hundred percent certain of that. But I can tell you from the two points of authority that I've had in my life, which are uh, poker management and uh, and fantasy football commissioner. Those are the ones where I am closest to a dictator. I know that sounds really stupid, but it's very accurate too. At the same time, yeah. Like when I go to a poker table and I have to make a decision. Uh, I, one person's winning and one person's losing. And I, in my mind, I'm making that decision correct 100% of the time. But in reality, I'm not necessarily making that decision correct 100% of the time, especially when other people are weighing in what their opinions are. I I, I'm in a very opinionated group of fantasy football players that if I rule on a trade a certain way, they're very upset. So it needs – decentralization is important because – even if I think I'm running the world properly or if I think that I'm correctly arbitrating these dispute cases, somebody else might not think I am. And in the gray areas, which this one isn't, in the gray areas is when it becomes a problem and as it becomes worse and worse. So the, I, and, and also, I want to say that the EOS community had nothing about this on their, on their uh, subreddit. Like, this should be a big win. Like, somebody, this worked the way it was supposed to. They stop this guy from getting his money stolen from them from him and it should have been a bigger deal than it was it wasn't i feel like the community needs to kind of latch onto this embrace this and and go with eos being the you know being ruled by these 21 people or this ben gates guy also important to note the person who wanted to open this dispute had to pay 370 dollars worth of eos to do it I, I totally understand why you're so blown away by that. But at the same time, like if it looks like a bank, it acts like a bank then it's a bank, right? Like if EOS wants to be a bank, that's fine. Like I, yeah, I what imagine... bank makes you pay 400 fucking dollars to be like, this dude just stole my money. <laughs> well, I, here's the thing, man. Like they have the ability to do something that nobody else can do. And like, I don't know what that, I don't know what the process is to undo a transaction. Right. I don't know how much resources went into that investigation. I, like, those are things that I don't know. And like, I don't know what the value of that is. I don't know. Like there are many things that I can't be, you know, fully answered here. I, I'm not a fan of this. And in a way, like I I'm, I'm really putting this in the same category as Ripple, and you said that earlier, where I think 
it's it's just not really a crypto. I think and Ripple is more decentralized than EOS. I agree with that. Um, but I, I don't think they're necessarily scams. I don't think they're bad, but they're just not going to be, you know, what I want out of the crypto space. And, you know, the people that are invested in that are, are very difficult to talk to and not the types that want to move off that position. Um, you know, TRX is kind of falling in that similar category. And you know what? Like, I can't tell these people that they're wrong because I don't know. I, I have no idea what's going to be right or wrong. But I, I just, that's not where, you know, I look at crypto like a big roulette table and I get to pick which numbers where my chips go. And those are just where I'm staying clear. <laughs> uh, yeah. So I, I can't, I'm not going to label EOS a scam. I, I'm labeling things like Substratum a scam or like, uh, you know our, our buddy oyster. oyster. <laughs> we have an oyster mention coming up on this. On this, by the way, um, <laughs> but yeah, EO, EOS isn't a scam. It just isn't exactly what it was presented as. It is what it's morphed into now. And just be be careful with what you're doing here. So um, I want to keep going with the EOS. Actually, I, I I actually wanted to stop you here real quick. Uh, I, I noticed your little comment here at the end. You'd expect them to at least champion it. Like I actually mentioned that without seeing you say this. Like I said, to people that believe in EOS, I don't know that they view this as a loss. And I'm 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 interested to see they shouldn't. how the community Yeah, I, I agree. And I, I'm interested why they haven't done that so far or if they will going forward. Yeah, they if they believe that the twenty one block producers are decentralized enough uh with the, uh, uh, to handle money. Like, you know, we have hundreds of people in uh, our House of Representatives in the United States and we have fifty or you know, we have a uh, a hundred senators and all that bullshit. Um, you know, we, we have some decentralization there, but it actually doesn't end up that way. So this is the same, you know, the same situation. Like there's, is it decentralized enough? If you think it is, if you think the 21 block producers, because they're a little bit liquid and you can vote them out whenever you want are decentralized enough, then this should be a win. (laughs) They might as well just call them profits, right? Like... (laughs) There, you just have to believe, right? You have to just trust. You just yeah. have to hope that they're you know, what they are. And, and I, I'd like to them. remind everybody that the way these accounts got frozen was that there was a fax sent to all of the 21 block producers. Oh my, yeah. I Actually, want to just remind everybody I don't, that. Yeah, happened. let's not forget that part of the story. EOS had to send a fax to the 21 block producers at some <laughs> point for some urgent emergency that happened. And like... I don't know how many of the people listening to this work in some sort of field with technology. I'm going to guess a high percentage, but can you just fathom what kind of business in 2018 is sending faxes? And I'm actually going to say that with the caveat that like, I understand that this could be reaching really remote parts of the world, right? Like I'm, I understand that not everybody in these 21 producers may be in, you know, Tokyo or, you know, wherever large, uh, I think they might be Germany or they could be in remote locations where maybe a fax machine's a little more practical. I don't know, but it just seems ridiculous to me. Yep. And now you have to transfer that private key or the public key or whatever, oh, whatever yeah. thing you got to gotta freeze. Type in, they had to manually type in. Well, we don't know they had right? to, but I think that like they would have had to, right? Like that's how that, I don't know. Who knows? We don't know the inner workings because it's not decentralized or transparent. There has to be a thing <laughs> that like a phone app that scans text and just like puts it into. Hey, text, you can right? you can OCR text. It's not 100 percent accurate though. Um, Fair. All right. So like I said, I'm gonna keep talking bonus a little, little little bit bonus coverage on EOS. Over time. I hadn't actually read the Constitution, and this post appeared on uh, on on the subreddit, and they were talking about the the Constitution. Um, it is like super funny to read it because not because of the information contained but how uh how it's actually worded we the freedom seeking people of the world with the purpose of creating an open source platform for communicating transacting and interacting in a manner free from censorship by sovereign entities and corporate interests returning ownership and control of data to users and content creators and promoting transparency in an effort to remove the requirement of trust from transactions hereby agree and establish this constitution to govern the use and maintenance of the EOS network. The constitution intends to serve as the ultimate protection for rights for citizens of the EOS digital nation. Uh, I, I like how they were removing trust there. That was, that was a key piece, but it's, it literally yeah. sounds like they're just like, 
ah, this is what you're supposed to write a, a constitution like, right? It has to sound like it was written in the 1850s. And, like, make it, it has to be, like, old-timey, like, really smarty-sounding language. And that way it's more comparable to the <laughs> to the u.s constitution i guess like or any other i mean look the 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 sales pitch for eos was fantastic right like it you know they there were only decentralized everything products what's that decentralized everything yes that was their sales pitch. well i mean listen like there were only a handful of working products in the space and you know like dan larimer or not he's doing something related to the blockchain and you know maybe i'm not a huge fan of you know the, the trail of uh projects that he's left behind but like wh whether you like it or not he definitely is part of the hall of fame of crypto right like he tells the story of crypto yeah oh uh, he'll be he'll be in there for years to come here's my favorite comment on this uh this part about the uh, about the eos thing it's from uh uh it's from vector trader you know technically eos is the most successful project in the crypto space the main goal was a cash grab, and they managed to get four billion of it. I'd say they succeeded in their only goal with flying colors, and continue to do so with the block validator scheme. So, I, I'm just—I always go back to what Anthony said to us that you only need a couple million dollars for a blockchain, right? Like a real solid blockchain, you don't need billions of yeah, dollars. Yeah, I think he said and, a few million, like was his. Yeah, yeah. So mean. let's just pretend it's ten, right? Let's just say that's the blockchain and like tons of like upgrade maintenance cost and whatever um you know what do you do at four billion you just like experiment right you just like you just play around and toy with things and see what works and then hopefully something really spikes and then you know if it doesn't then you just lost a bunch of investors money and if it does then you can just take a lot of it for yourself and you know take a big rake it's uh, we've said for a long time we really want EOS to succeed because of how much money they ra they've raised. Yep. So uh, a name that I can't even read has an unpopular opinion that Ricardian contracts and blockchain constitutions are good ideas, just not the way EOS is kind of doing it. I actually don't know what Ricardian contract means, but I I'm all for it. Like on chain governance, on chain governance is very interesting to me. I am I love the work that IOHK is doing involving game theory and all of that. So yeah, I just don't think that, uh, what the fuck was this guy's name? Ben Gates is, <laughs> is, I don't think Ben Gates needs to be deciding who gets their fucking money. Is it like his name sounds almost the same as something you put on your balls. What do the validators do? Like, shouldn't they just vote on this? I, I don't actually know how the arbitrators picked. I didn't look into that. So I'm sure yeah. that like, the validators pick this guy for whatever reason. So, all right, I'm Mike. Sure he has a long history of being Dan Lammers' friend. I'm sick. <laughs> I'm sick of talking about EOS. <laughs> we talk about all it right, way too I'm, much. I'm moving on. Go, let's go to Plan B. <laughs> all right. Here we are. Oh wait, one more comment here. Recording contract is plain English contract stating what the con smart contract is supposed to do with some metadata. Okay, cool. So, so plain plain English uh and simplified constitution yeah i mean i'm i'm definitely a fan of that isn't that what a white paper is supposed to be well i, I there's there seems to be a different be, difference because this is specifically stating what a smart contract is supposed to do uh, it has some metadata in it so like if the smart contract isn't working exactly the way it's supposed to you can change the code and so refer you to could, that you can install larimer's vision into each smart contract yeah, or like you don't run into the Bitcoin versus Bitcoin Cash situation where right. there it's very clear what it's supposed to be, and you can refer back to that and be like, no, this is like what it was supposed to be. All right, so I ran into this post on Twitter yesterday, and I noticed it in the R cryptocurrency, so I wanted to to put it in here. However, I was offended that the original Twitter post did not get the proper credit it deserved. It was cut out, and I felt like seeing it for themselves. Maybe they are this person, and I'm an asshole right now. <laughs> but uh, the the screen name was Cash Pants with a K and a Z. So shout out to Cash Man, who's not able to make it today. He's helping a trainee at work. Sorry, brah. Um, so I went and got the original because I knew how to find it, and it is here. Un momento. 
This break brought to you by coffee. Coffee is literally how... I'm like I have we... everything going off at once right now. Coffee is how you stay awake. It's how you function. It's how you live your life. Drink more coffee and become more addicted to caffeine. Have a nice day. All right. So from Crypto Cobain, he put, by 2020, the U.S. government is on track to spend more on debt interest than it spends on Medicaid. By 2023, more on debt interest than national defense. By 2025, the government will spend more on debt interest than every non-defense discretionary federal program combined. And then he finishes this tweet with, it's time for plan B. And the B is the, uh, I guess there is a, is there a Bitcoin like emoji? Is that? Yeah, uh, it's, it a uni- like a- it's Unicode. They put Bitcoin into Unicode a little while ago. You can. Okay, so hey, it's time for playing Bitcoin. Bitcoin. So uh, uh, this, here's this resonates what, quite a bit. Before you get going, what I'm gonna say is, who the fuck cares what our debt is? You gonna come get it, motherfucker? We got the biggest army in the world, bitches. <laughs> Sorry. Um, <laughs> Try to collect, so son. There, there wasn't uh, much other content to work with up, and so we, you know, we could talk <laughs> about how accurate this is, whatnot. Um, but my favorite comment from in there was that, uh, Henry said, at least, uh, something is mooning last year. It was crypto coming years. It'll be the national debt. <laughs> and there was somebody responded with, uh, unlike crypto national debt is truly a store of value as it will only grow over time. So I, I enjoyed that little rapport back and forth. Um, you know, it's just a reminder that we are so removed from the process of government taxes and where the money's being handled. And um, I think that it's very unlikely that the majority of U S government, for example, is responsibly spending money or intelligently spending money. And, you know, it's getting out of control and to the point that we don't know, like we need to figure out a backup plan, right? Like, Maybe a recession is coming. Maybe it's not. But, you know, I'm interested in having myself prepared. And actually, like, I feel like crypto gives me some international, like, money, right? It's just, it's this global currency that it is what it is. Yeah. Uh, I Like, I... He, the The debt situation is tough to pick apart because I don't understand all of the economics behind it. I made the joke, like, what are you going to do? Come after it where we have the biggest army in the world, right? But, eh. Like, I think that's kind of the attitude that a lot of the lawmakers will take. They're just like, well, what are they going to do? Come after the money? So, it's going to be interesting to watch the next financial crisis and what triggered it and what caused it. Apparently, what triggers this chat is posting white Reddit. I, I, I... Don't use night mode on Reddit. I use night mode on Discord. I didn't know Reddit had a night mode, actually. I, I will probably switch to that now. Uh Yeah, I, I am such a well, I'm such a Reddit newbie that I've I keep trying to post from the same account into uh forums I that already. I don't have enough karma to post in. <laughs> you gotta it's, be it's literally it happens to me about uh, every three days because we do our cryptocurrency on Tuesday and then we do uh, Friday flagship on Fridays. And then I'll try to like get some of that stuff working into the, in the subreddits, but then I keep getting all my posts deleted because I don't have enough karma and it's, and it's very frustrating. Well, go into like one of the porn subreddits and post like a picture of a like hot naked chick and then you'll get karma <laughs> and then you're good to go. <laughs> oh man. Yeah. So, uh, this might be one of the problems we have in, in this uh, subreddit that people discussed. Like, I, I want to contribute, guys. Nah, but it's not that not that hard to get. Karma. I didn't understand the, <laughs> the karma system, and it keeps blocking me. I'm trying to uh, <laughs> add some better contributions going forward. Yeah. Uh, well, anyway, um, I'm sure O Man's got some some good things that he can s- send you to there to help you get the uh, help you get that. All right. Enough about porn and subreddits. Let's uh let's let's talk about this one. This one's fun. The title of this article Fun Fair has a vulnerability worse than oyster. Worse than oyster. 
I have to admit, Funfair has probably been recommended for us to cover about five times. Yeah. Fun- just because it's a gambling coin. And and we keep immediately responding with like, well, I don't like that it's a gambling coin, right? Like that yeah. that adds a lot of complications because the incentive methods for the centralized party can often be uh, very high. So Brent, what is this story? I, here's what I also feel about people recommending that we cover Funfair because we were <laughs> we were professional poker players. Like they, I think that it's like when your your mom buys you like a poker chip set for Christmas oh, because yeah, because she knows you like poker. It's like what are you doing? Oh, yeah. like, why are you getting me that? It's the worst thing you could get me. Uh, so it, um, the so yeah here so this guy was on his hype game. He literally posted the, the title worse than oyster. Funfair can steal your tokens. They can mint infinite tokens. And and like So is this is this an option for bullish or bullshit? Bullish or bullshit? Uh not really because it's going to be a little bit lukewarm and it was already answered in the title of the post. So they gave it flair, which said that it was true but sensationalized. And it is. So the the what everything he was saying, he was backing up with information from the code. And the uh, I'm gonna post this. This is the uh, the comment from the act from the actual team member that came in and responded. And here's first I want to say he wrote that it's worse than oyster the vulnerability. It can't be worse than oyster if they haven't actually fucking done it. So like <laughs> oyster already exit scammed. It's already yeah, as bad got, like, as it can be. Yeah, they got like 300k or more and like they're already like pieced out, right? Yeah, the, the, the community still was like, yeah, but the, he has a good idea. We shouldn't abandon it yet, right? Yeah, it can that only it can only be worse than it can only be worse than Oyster if it actually exit scammed and did something worse than Oyster, right? So Right. So that is completely so like the title is is bullshit. If we're talking bullish or bullshit, title is bullshit because it's not worse than Oyster. So maybe it's a little bit easier to exploit it or something like that. So the 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 team member comes on and gives the exact same thing that the substratum team says when they're presented with similar things. Uh, they said, "Look, guys, it's always been this way. Uh, we we said that this is how it was supposed to be. We've addressed this. You know, it, you know, if if you have a problem with it, like, sorry, here's where we talked about it before." That doesn't make it okay if you've talked about it before that you can just mint as many coins as you want or do whatever. Like it, it still qualifies as a big piece of trust. It's a casino, right? Yeah, yeah. Funfair works as like a casino, basically. So now you have this massive trust trust piece here where you have to trust that they're not going to just start printing more of their coin and devalue it and stuff like that. So um, and there's also the fact that it, because it's a casino there, there's an, another layer of trust that like, no matter what currency you're using, let's just pretend that like, it's a, you know, just plain us dollars. Like we've used for years on online sites. Like there's a huge amount of trust that, you know, leaving money on a site is not the best idea. Yeah. It, on, on gambling. And also you have to, trust that the gambling games are legit which i assume they're open source so they're probably fine uh but yeah look it's something to be aware of if you're investing in funfair you need to know that these people have this ability that they don't seem to care that they have the ability they're saying it's necessary so that they can not have to do something else with the contract i don't know i don't understand the code so i can't really speak to that but this read the statement from the team and kind of i just don't like that these teams are having vulnerabilities in their coins and they're saying, ah, man, like, it's fine. It's always been there. Not vulnerabilities, but things that shouldn't be part of, like, a crypto. Like, it's always been there. It, it, you can't... We said that that was going to be there, you know, weeks ago, months ago. Like, that's that's what I keep hearing from uh, the Substratum community as I... Uh, uh, we we were very specific that we believe Substratum is, a, is like, an all-the-way scam at this point. And we've gotten... Their community has reacted strongly against that and said, what are you talking about? The team has addressed all those things that you're talking about. The fact that the team mentioned that they exist doesn't make them good. So just keep that in mind as you're going through the crypto space. I'm glad you reminded me about Substratum because I have a friend, Blair, that uh, has met the team and thinks we got it all wrong. So I told him we would open an interview with Open Arms 
and uh, I'm going to remind him. Oh, man, if I could put them together with some of the other guests that I'm working on. (laughs) Oh, that would be that would be a fun one. All right. So let me let me. All right. So take take the wheel a little bit longer here. Let me let me make this happen. (laughs) <laughs> all right okay so that was that was pretty much all we had on fun fair and then since since i guess all we talk about are scams these days like i don't mean to only talk about scams these just happen to be all the top posts in our cryptocurrency that memes and i can't really talk about memes that much so we're talking about a korean exchange we're talking about pure bit pure bit performed an exit scam of thirteen thousand ethereum the f- <laughs> they they raised this money their token sale finished on november 9th so this is four days ago now and it was like two days ago when this happened uh let me post the i keep forgetting to post the links here we go it's coming it's coming everybody here's a link to this boom um <laughs> the 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 founder of the exchange after they did the exit scam it changed their cacao profile and I guess Kakao is like a, uh, it's kind of like an overarching social media that uh, that's like messaging. It, I don't want to say it's like the Korean Facebook, but I because I it don't. It sounds really, more like the. Um, it's the, probably closer uh, to Line or 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 uh, like like Line or WhatsApp or something. I was thinking like Vonage. Or I th- it sounded more like a maybe a physical business like connection. No, no, it's not like that. They they it's a social network of some sort. I okay. just don't know which one to compare it to. Um, okay, so it's like a messenger. So it's probably closer to uh, WhatsApp or or Line. And anyway, his profile picture on there changed to "I'm sorry" in Korean. So like, I I don't know if he was like actually sorry or if he's just like trolling on top of it. Be like, yeah, I got my two million dollars, bitches. Um, it, it's just another like I, I feel like the Korean ecosystem for crypto is already pretty like. Um, fragile. Yeah, it's fragile. Like they, the regulators could change that at any time, and they've been softening to it. So this is going to actually have more of an effect than just like the the person and the people that he stole the money from. Um, my favorite comment is not that funny, but this is oh my god, I'm so sick of everyone in the mm-hmm. sub calling everything a scam in quotation marks from it would be grand, and it's almost every comment in the post about funfair. So where people are in funfair yelling at somebody for outing a for posting that something is a scam given it was overhyped which is probably why they got such pushback on it but they gave the evidence if you provide evidence that something is not on the up and up and we're in an unregulated space where there is a massive incentive to scam people then you need it needs to be taken seriously if it's legitimate i don't know if there was any actual evidence before this went down but don't just like write off everything that's bad as FUD. Like you need to look into claims that something may not be what it appears. Um, Dab like Wiz Khalifa said that, uh, that he's Korean and they got FOMO'd into another scam. I don't know what the other scam is, but I'm, I'm excited. I always like to learn about new scams. Uh, it, if you have a link for that, I'd love to read up on the new scam that they FOMO'd right into after, after pure bit. So that's it. Just another little, another brick in the wall as far as this, uh, you know, fragile eco- ecosystem is concerned, and a, and another troll like uh, like our buddy um, Bruno Block there. Another another exit scam that isn't didn't just take the money and shut up and leave. They started taunting everybody. Um, in our Discord server, we just got alerted that the head of the Cardano Foundation has just resigned. So I am also currently. That link, that's Michael Parsons. I uh, am trying to find that. So, uh, do, 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 do. that I look. Obviously, we can't report on that too mm. much without doing our due diligence. But I loved the way the Cardano, uh, or IOHK and Emergo handled the bad situation with the with the Cardano Foundation. I don't. Obviously, they should have done a better job at deciding who was put in there originally. But the fact that they were able to get that guy out of there now seems amazing. <clears throat> yep, this is from the CardanoFoundation.org. Um, as of today, he announced Michael Parsons, chairman of the council, has resigned in immediate effect. Pascal Schmidt, council member, will take over as chairman of the foundation council on an interim basis. 
um they're working on a supplement the, oh he's looking, the swedish citizen supplement. right i think they're in sweden they swish national they're... pascal grads graduated from blah 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 blah. oh they're in switzerland okay i knew there was an s involved yes <laughs> they, yeah yeah it's it's so he was a swish citizen that is required to be on a foundation so that hey, they put an email address here brent you want to send him an email I I tried I tried to get hired by uh, IOHK. I sent him an email. I was like, "Hey guys, please notice me. Look at me. Look at me. I'm Mr. Beast." It didn't work out so well for me. Well, you know what? Who knows? Maybe they just haven't gotten to it yet. Maybe they've. Maybe I'm on their list. Yeah, they're like Coinbase. They have a long list yeah. of. Um, people. it I we will talk about this in depth this Friday. I promise you on the on the Friday flagship. We I don't want to not do this justice and just kind of like off the cuff read this and and react to it. But, yeah, but I wanted to include it though because this is something we've been asking for a while, and I'm very interested in Cardano. So it's just something that uh, should be positive for that community. Yeah. Alrighty, I got one other little combo here. You can grab the link on the bottom. That would help. Wait. Oh, I need to. Oh, oh we're gra okay. Grabbing a link. Here it comes. This involves Vitalik. <clears throat> Why yes, Glenn it thinks the crypto space, and I can't read the rest of it. So basically, um, I did some digging into who this Glenn guy was. It uh, He didn't seem to have a big following, but just kind of, you know, he's probably pretty relevant, but he's not like a major, you know, star, like, you know, the Vitalik's of the world. Um, and he just responded, or he just put some thoughts out that definitely resonated with me. And it basically says in here that, um, and you see in the second part of this tweet, he says, so when people ask me, what is blockchain good for? I respond, what is the temple of Jerusalem good for, for making it rain or for helping to create and preserve people who eventually led to Jesus Christ, Benjamin Disraeli and Karl Marx. Now, uh, I I know I know the story of Jesus Christ. I'm pretty sure Karl Marx was a war um, figure. It's some he's very politically uh, um, communist figure, if I recall correctly. And then I'm not sure who the other person is in this, but in either ways, I thought this would be a good conversation to have. And Vitalik seemed to respond positively to this idea as well. I'm not actually sure what he's what he's getting at here. What is the temple in Jerusalem good for for making it rain? I well, here's what I got out of it. What I got out of it is that he's saying Ethereum is developing blockchain the way that we want blockchain to be developed, right? And I and I think that you know if, if some of those people are going to be Jesus Christ, right? Some of those people are going to be Karl Marx, but that's unfortunately you have to have extremes on both ends, but you can have the upside of a Jesus Christ and the downside of a Marx, for example. But, you know, this can only come from a, a certain type of culture that is that is had a certain type of way. Uh, I, I mean, so I, I would just because I'm so not religious or or interested in the particulars of religion, like I, I consider I almost consider Jesus Christ like a bad thing like i know he's supposed to be virtuous and a guy like i so i would consider that i, I don't know I, i'm trying to figure out what he's saying but i know jesus christ and Karl marx both have very devout followers based on their ideas um i know jesus christ and Karl marx are both socialists i don't know anything about this Dis, really uh so i he may be making a point that is being lost on me but the i don't know if those are the best ideas or, or the best people to be picking out here. I don't, I just don't get the, I don't know. I don't get the, I don't get the correlation, but I, I mean, I like that people are saying good things about crypto and it's not a scam. That's nice. Eh, maybe I read too much into this and it's, it's not as interesting as I thought, but that's all right. I'm probably just missing it. Like, I don't know what I, I, I wonder if there was more to his, uh, explanation. Um, Oh, it was pretty lengthy. I, I gave the parts of it that that stood out to me. I, I'm definitely I'm pulling up the Vitalik part right now. Yeah. Uh, so he may just be like there. There are going to be definite 
specific. Here's the link to Vitalik's quote of the tweet, and you can dig into the Glenn Whale quote. Oh, I, I mean, I don't want to do that live, but I think like I, I'm well, starting. Anybody that's interested, I'm starting to piece this together. So I think he's saying that Jesus Christ had a very specific philosophy. Karl Marx had a very specific philosophy, and people chose to follow who they chose to follow for different reasons. And I guess the temple in Jerusalem is probably like central to this for whatever reason. Um, so, so blockchain what he, what he does say, is creating what, different ideologies that you can choose to follow. You can choose to follow EOS and have like your centralized ideology and trust in the people to reverse the transactions, etc. Or you can follow, uh, you know, the Bitcoin philosophy and and have strength in numbers. Yeah, he, he goes on to say things like the use case of Ethereum is less particular uh, is, is less of a technical question and more offering a vision of the future that can save us from returning to the 1930s next time we hit a recession. Yeah, well, the 1930s wasn't a recession. That was a depression. So, yeah, we need to avoid whatever. We need to avoid that. Um, is there a difference between recession and depression? Like, I, I was assuming you meant the same thing. Well, depression is worse. So, I don't okay. know. I know there's like a, like a point where what where it becomes a depression instead of a recession and that like during our last recession people were so scared to call it a depression because like once you call it that everything freaks the fuck out and I don't remember exactly what happened. I do see another <laughs> exit scam as a top post on our cryptocurrency just like for what it's worth when I clicked on a link I saw <clears throat> that 3 hours ago liquid.io is likely liquidating their customers assets through Bancor and Binance possible exit scam and it looks like he's providing evidence so um ah, it's so sad to see all this happening but like these icos ran out of money and they couldn't create their products because like things kind of tanked and um, <clears throat> yeah we're gonna have a lot of this we're gonna have a lot of a lot of scams a lot of coins fail and we're going to get a lot of negative press because of this and you need to be very careful about the projects that you invest in the projects that become True, because when we compare this to like the the techno bubble of uh, you know the late '90s, and we talk about Pets.com and we talk about that stuff, those weren't scamming people; they were just overvalued. So it wasn't like they were taking a bunch of money and then stealing it. They were just raising more funds than they needed to be raising, and they were worth more money than they were supposed to be worth. They still had to function as companies, and they weren't allowed to just take your money away. Here, if they don't like what's going on, they can just get the they can just take the money and get out. Um, so they've been yeah it it's so it's so sad watching all the scams go down. And I don't feel like there's enough people that talk about the the bad parts of the of the crypto space because like a lot of content producers, if you say a bad thing about a community, now all of a sudden like when it, when when I say substratum sucks, all the substratum people don't want to listen to our podcast anymore. When I, when I say bad stuff about EOS, I'm alienating an entire community with EOS when I'm saying I don't appreciate the way they're running the coins. So it's so difficult for, for content producers to say bad stuff, but we need to hear the downside, unfortunately. <laughs> You're absolutely right. And, and you know we made this podcast as the show that we wanted to have found when we were getting into the crypto and we wanted to learn more and you know we're going to stand by that and you know we're not a we're not going to you know work for free forever but we're going to tell you where our biases lie we're going to tell you where our history was and you know if you follow us you know we'll be very honest about those things because that's what's important to us and that's what's important for this entire ecosystem to evolve i wish we were working for free that would be nice <laughs> instead of Instead of paying well, money. Well, all right. Yeah. We're, we're working out a loss, guys. All right. If anyone's curious, we're working out a loss. So, uh, Uger, yeah. Ogre, Ogre, person, I guess, it, uh, said, what did you say about Substratum? I just posted, like, we have, that's a snippet of our, um, that's a snippet of our podcast a couple of weeks ago where we talked about Substratum. A lot of it was information that was up there in the subreddit for the week. There was... Uh, you know, this is nothing new. It's not like we found anything. However, the author of this particular piece has been in contact with me, and I believe we're going to have him on the show. So we'll be able to go more into the uh, specifics of the of why Substratum may be a scam with very fact based. And in fact, when we do do that uh, interview, I am going to be the uh, advocate for Substratum. I will be asking the questions like. 
how are you, how could you possibly know this like and make the best arguments that I can for substratum I can take myself out of it like that but I I do have a very clear opinion on that coin <clears throat> indeed uh, a, a, any other uh, questions that might lead to some self promotion I've got oh my god I just saw the upvotes versus downvotes we have 16 downvotes and four upvotes on that video <laughs> <laughs> that's great yeah. like i well, said you alienate a community then uh I, I, unfortunately we we're gonna call it like i see it and we're going to be willing to be wrong and we're gonna basically correct anything that we feel is wrong but as long as the evidence shows itself to be a certain way we're gonna admit what that means to us I agree. So we always we always do. We used to leave more time for questions at the end, but we realized not many people were asking questions. They would often post uh, uh, things that we bananas. hadn't researched and oh, and bananas, and ask for our opinions on it. But if we have an opinion on something, or if you have a question for us, then um, uh, all three of the people mentioned that tweet were Jewish. Okay, so that makes sense. That 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 I didn't know Karl Marx is Jewish off the top of my head, so I think he's saying that the temple didn't create an immediate obvious benefit, but fostered people who would give rise to some really important individuals. Uh, though nobody created the temple yeah, directly. Yeah, that, that was kind of what I got out of that branch. That it was a, it's a healthy place to cultivate the future of blockchain. Yep. So or distributed ledger technology, whatever that means. Blockchain is our temple, and. And then the those that those coins are, I guess, like our different Jesuses. And uh, what does that make us? Uh, no, I, I, I've had this conversation a lot, and I don't know how to have it in a really like simply logical, intelligent way, right? I feel like, you know, your your opinions are able to be distributed in so many different ways that you're likely to find something that really stands for a lot of your beliefs. Right. And, and eventually people are going to hold on to those things very dearly. And, you know, that doesn't necessarily make it bad, like loyalty, patronage, um, you know, fans, like these are all things that are kind of similar and they don't necessarily mean a bad thing, but, you know, I believe that we're going to, we're going to see some really interesting communities develop within these ecosystems. Yeah, we have talked about the the similarities and differences of uh, religion and blockchain. We have an episode on that. Uh, if you check out our episode archive, you can find that. But I mean, our, our best option, I still stand by this, might be just to try to become a religion li legally <laughs> and, and open a freaking church or something. I don't know what else we can do. Let's do it. Uh, let, let's let's just let's just uh, go and record our show every stuff. every Sunday morning in a church. <laughs> we can we can start off with a prayer that's like, "We are not financial advisors. This Please do your own fun. research. <laughs> All investments have inherent risk. Yep. Do do some chants like that and praising the sun and those. <laughs> all right guys i think that's gonna do it for us this week yeah we're having religious chants that means it's done it's yeah, time to wrap yeah. up yeah i'm stalling at this point uh but it was great we appreciate the interaction um please if you like us join our discord server um, we have some youtube videos we have our podcast anywhere you can find podcasts we would appreciate it guys thanks for the support oh that uh, that didn't make a hold <laughs> on what oh I tried to post a link. Yeah, if you're gonna shill us, bro, do it right. Make sure but we get the it didn't do the social linky share. thing. So there we, we go. can't. We blue. can't expect people to click, cut and paste. It'll never work. Yeah, no way. Got to rely on the click. CryptoBasicPodcast.com. All right, us. guys, I gotta go. All right, me too. See Peace ya. Peace out. <laughs>